try. But I did want one with the world spear on it. I think you'll find that that old-fashioned stamp will carry a letter just as far, Miss Abigail. Good day. I'll get your medicine right away, Mr. Haddon. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. But you saw Miss Abigail is a very particular customer. Say, Doc, do you realize how much time you wasted in that three-cent purchase? Oh, that's nothing. She'll be around again tomorrow. Have a free look at all the new magazines. That's right. I don't know how you stay in business. Well, I'm still in after 20 years. But I guess maybe a small town is a lot different than a city. Here, folks sort of feel that the drugstore is a place to drop in and pass the time of day and settle world problems. Yes, they were using the bank the same way when I took over two months ago, but I'm changing all that. Now, that may be better for the bank, but to slow down occasionally for a little friendly gossip would do more for that stomach of yours than my medicine. Huh? Nonsense. He didn't do so much at the bank with his highfalutin notions. Well, Joe... Maybe there isn't much you can do in a community as small as this. But frankly, I can't see a man like Haddon ever bought it. Me neither. Well, Doc, see you later. Okay. Hello, Dad. Come on, let's go to lunch. Well, uh, I can't leave the store. Well, where's Frankie? times do I have to tell you not to monkey around with things that you know nothing about? Yeah, but, but how am I going to be a great scientist if I, don't, if I don't experiment? Well, you do your experimenting in college next year. Whew. Now get on up there where you belong. Go on. Get. Oh, what a mess. Oh, it's terrible. Well, come on, Dad. Frankie can clean this up tonight. <sighs> Remember now, no more foolishness. When you're cleaned up, get behind that fountain and stay there. Yes, sir. Goodbye, doctor. Frankie! Hello, Mrs. Daggett. Hello. Willie? Willie wants a sarsaparilla. Yes, I do not. I want a soda. He wants a sarsaparilla. A special sarsaparilla. Oh, a special. Mm. Tell me, Willie. How's everything at school? Fine. That's good. Candy when you get home. What do you want? I just come over after some headache powders. Headache powders? Oh, that's bad. Let me feel your pulse. Stick out your tongue. But I just... Stick out your tongue. Oh, you know, headaches is only the first symptoms. Come on, I'll mix up. Oh, but Mr. Frankie. Uh, Mr. Frankie. You know I ain't got no business in this room. And Dr. Hunter done told you about them experiments. The last time you mixed one for me, it was for my liver. Well, it worked, didn't it? I said it did. My hair fell out in bunches. Oh, oh, that. Well, uh, I just got a couple of those Latin names mixed up. That's all. But look, this time you're in a bad way. Headaches, spots before your eyes, dizzy spells. Oh, Mr. Frank, ain't none of them things wrong with me. This headache powder is for the lady over at the hotel. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? What can I do for you? Anyone else around? Just Jefferson and I, but I'm sure we can take care of anything you Any want. Any other way out? Well, there's a door in the back. Well, lock it and get back here. It's already locked. Get over to that phone. And if either of you yap, I'll let you have it.
Get me New York. Circle three, five, four, six, one, and reverse the charges. In is calling. Hurry. Bill, this is hype. I'm in Midvale. Looks like I'm washed up. <laughs> yeah, but I can't blab anything as hot as that over the phone. Now shut up and listen. I'm in the Midvale drugstore. I'll leave the load down with a couple of kids here. Hold on a minute. What's your name? Uh, Frankie Kelly. Yours? Uh, Jefferson? Uh, Jefferson White. Okay, Bill. Once Frankie Kelly works here, the other's a colored boy named Jefferson. I'll tell him all the dope. You get up here fast. Nah, they won't squeal if they know what's good for them. You know how to take care of them if they do? Okay. <coughs> Listen, you two. Never mind that. A guy named Smiling Bill Martin. What I'm going to tell you is for him and only him. And if you spill a word to anyone else, you're washed up. Understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell Smiling Bill that... Tell him he'll... Uh, get some ammonia, quick. He's fainted. Good. Drink it for me. Jeff, look. Uh, Mr. Frank, is that blood? Yeah, he's dead. Frankie! Frankie. Open the door! Frankie! Frankie! What's the matter here? Why was that door locked? A, a man's been shot, Doctor. What? Frankie, are you all right? Yeah, sure, sure. Get the sheriff over here in a hurry. And this is very serious, Mr. Haddon. We have a murder on our hands. Oh, me. Who is he? I don't know. I never saw him before. And he said to this Mr. Martin that we wouldn't squeal if we knew what was good. Don't worry about that. What was the message you were to give Martin? Well, we never got the message. He started to tell us and then he coughed a couple of times and grabbed his side and fell over in a heap. Well, if he started, he must have said something, a word or two. Think hard. Oh, yeah, when he hung up the phone, he said that the message he gave us was for Martin only. And he said if we spill a word that we was washed up. Quiet, Jepson. What then, Frankie? Well, he said... Tell Smiling Bill, tell him, and then he coughed a couple of times and fell out of the booth there on the floor. You sure that's all, Frankie? No, yes, sir. Give him the exact word. He done just as Mr. Frankie said. Well, there's nothing more I can do until I hear from the coroner. I'm going to call New York. See that nothing's touched here. Yes, sir. bulletin just received. The little town of Midvale jumped right into national prominence today with the death of Hype Innes, New York's public enemy number one, whom the authorities have been investigating for the past six months. Here's an interesting slide out of the Hype Innes killing. Midvale, the small town scene of the crime, is cashing in on this moment in the sun. Reporters, detectives, district attorney, investigators, and plain ordinary onlookers have changed the town overnight into a miniature metropolis. into the story. Well, you know, he uh, kind of had that look. Hold it, Doc. Okay, Doc. There you go. All right, who's next? Doc Moe, Doc. Thanks. Say, uh, didn't he say anything before he kicked off? 
Well, sure, he, but he was awful weak, you know. And, well, he could just barely get a whisper out, so I, I leaned over and I, I took him in my arms. And he looked up at me and he said, Doc, I, I've been around. I, I know all the answers. And crime doesn't pay. <laughs> there you are, Charlie. Gangster's last words. <laughs> Why does he say those things? My, my, my. Okay, Kent, you got your laugh. Now, how about giving us a little straight dope? What did he say? Well, if you don't believe me, go back and ask Jefferson. He was standing right there with me. Just like I told you, when the fellow fell out of the booth, he said to me, Doc, I think I'm a go... Go I... back and check that order. Yeah, but, 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 uh... I'll take over here. Run along. Yes, sir. How soon after the thing happened did you get here, Doc? Hey, Doc, is that a straight story the kid's telling? Come on, give us a break, Doc. I've told you all I know. Come on, Doc, now's the chance Who's to get next? your name in the paper. Come on, give us a story, Doc. Doc. Give us... The sheriff? That's Potter. Yeah, one P and two T's. No, but as close as we can figure from the trail of bloodstains, he was shot just before he entered the drugstore. Uh-huh. Okay, then. I'll give you more later. Excuse me. I want New York. Plaza 11240. And will you reverse the charges, please? This is Jerry Daly speaking. Hello, Ames speaking. Hello, Bob. This is one Jerry Daly reporting arrival in Midvale. Say so this town's so crowded that the citizens are running around like ants on a picnic lunch. Well, there may be some interesting developments. The watchman at the Brooklyn First National saw Hype's picture in the paper and identified him as the leader of the gang that stuck up the bank last month. You know, I have an idea that Hype had that 300,000 they got away with hidden in Midvale. You seen Sheriff Potter yet? No, I thought I'd do a little scouting around first. Right now, I'm about to interview the town pump, Frankie Kelly. Oh, the young fellow in the store, eh? You ought to be able to handle that. And by the way, keep your eye peeled for smiling Bill Martin or any of his boys. All right, I'll let you know if any of them show up. Uh, Mr. Frankie, why did you talk to them reporters that way? You know that Mr. Hype Man didn't tell you nothing like that. Well, what's the difference? What's the matter with you? You scared? Well, I ain't exactly serene. Oh, you don't believe all that stuff about the gangsters, do you? All I know, Mr. Frankie, that a man got killed. And we got to dig up something to tell that Mr. Smile and Bill Martin when he gets here. Oh, well, look, in the first place, if he's mixed up in anything hot, he won't be coming around here. Hey, gang! Smiling Bill Martin just flew into town. Come yeah, on. Yeah, what a great. Let's go. Gangway. Come on with that camera. Okay. Gangway. We're... Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What is we going to do now? Uh, I don't know. I'll think of something. I hope. Your drugstore's a madhouse. What are those press vultures after now? Oh, they just heard Smiling Bill Martin arrived in town. Oh. Let me have a dose of my medicine. Hey, where are you going? I'm going to the hotel before I lose my job. Oh, no, you don't. You're not going to walk out on me now. Come on over here and sit down and help me think. Oh, my goodness. What did I want to come to this drugstore for? I hope you'll feel better now, Mr. Haddon. Thanks, I'm sure I will. Frankie! Wait here. I'll have this ready for you in an hour. Uh, clean up that fountain, Frankie. Right away. May I have some ice cream, please? Oh, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, I didn't see you. What flavor would you like? Mm, vanilla. Yes, ma'am. Doctor I've been reading about, aren't you? Uh, yeah, sure. Local boy? Oh, yes, ma'am. Lived here all my life. But I'm going to New York next year. Oh, that's fine. I suppose you know everybody in town. Oh, yeah, sure. I know their aches and their pains and, well, you know, all that doctor stuff. And all the family skeletons, too? What's this I hear about smiling Bill Martin coming to town? Uh, I don't know. What are you doing here? Why don't you go over to the hotel? I can't leave, Dr. Hunter. Why not? Uh, Mr. Frankie told me to wait. What for? Uh, he's thinking. <laughs> That'll be good. Hand me my hat, Jeff. Yes, sir.
Town's crowded, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. You know, I've been looking all over for a place to stay. You don't know if a private family would let me have a room, do you? No, I'm sorry, I don't. Why don't you take her over to your house, Frankie? Your mother has an extra room, hasn't she? Oh, why, sure. Gee, it's a swell room, two big windows. Well, that would be wonderful. I'm going over to the bank, but I'll be right back, and then you can take the young lady over to your house. Well, fine, I'll get my bag. There. You see, Frankie? Now, that's business. These newspaper folks, they pay well, and your mother can use the money. Now, wake up and try to stay out of trouble until I get back. All right, doctor. Hey, uh, Mr. Frankie. Yeah? Uh, what do you think, uh, I mean, about that uh, Mr. Martin? Oh, yeah, smiling Bill. Come on, boys. Hello. Had a little trouble ducking those reporters. Then I wanted to wait till he wasn't so busy. Oh, we got plenty of time. That's good. You're Frankie Kelly, eh? Yes, sir. And you're, uh... Well, how about delivering the little message a friend of mine gave you for me? Well, well that's just it. We, we didn't get the message. He, he died before he could give it to us. Yeah, so I read in the papers. Oh, you boys played it smart. Now, that was just the stuff to tell the sheriff and the reporters. But I'm Martin. Smiling Bill, you know. And I'm here to get that message, so talk up. Mm -mm. Hey, you. Sir? Come back here. But honest, Mr. Martin, that's the truth. Now, look. I don't want any trouble. But I'm a busy man, and I haven't got time to fool around with a couple half-baked kids. But we've told you everything we know. There's nothing... Now, talk up. Well, uh, 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 he was, uh... Now, you two boys get together and try to figure this thing out. I'll see you both later. Do you know who that was? That was smiling Bill Martin. No. Yeah, wasn't it? It sure was. All right, Frankie. Where shall we go? As soon as I get my coat. Say, you must be Jefferson. Uh, yes, ma'am. Well, weren't you scared when High Pennis held that gun on you and Frankie? I thought I was, but I didn't even know the meaning of the word. All set? Yeah. Well, so long, Jeff. See you later. I hope. It's just down the street. You mind walking? No, not at all. Oh, where are you? Oh, hello, Mr. Jones. How are you? Everybody calls me Doc. Well, that's what I like about small towns. They're so friendly and people are so kind. Hey, Doc! Yeah? <sighs> I'm sure Frankie will like it. Well, I hope so. Let's see how it looks with the candles lighted. All right, put the flowers over on the desk, darling. And get the matches. I'll pull down the shades and then we'll find out. You know, there's something awfully romantic about candlelight. I remember when me and Frankie's father Rest his soul. We used to sit in the church by hours, holding hands and watching the candles when we were courting. He must have been an awfully good man. He was. Awfully good. And awfully broke. Well, I'm sure that won't happen to Frankie. He's going to be a big success. Well, I hope so. But he wouldn't have a job now if it wasn't for your father's patience. Well, maybe father understands all the trouble a boy goes through learning things. I know someday Frankie's going to be a great scientist. Well, you just keep believing in Frankie, darling. And I know with you rooting for him, he's going to be all right. Right in here, Miss Daly. 
Somebody's coming. Maybe it's Frankie. Come on, we'll surprise him. Hey, what's all the... Uh... Happy birthday. Oh, Happy gee. birthday, darling. Ah, uh, thanks, Ma. I forgot all about my birthday. Well, we didn't. Oh, oh, excuse me, Mom. This is Miss Daly. She's a New York newspaper woman. Down here covering that hype Ennis murder. Mm -hmm. And the, the hotel is full, so I thought maybe, you know, that spare room of ours... If it isn't too much trouble. Well, uh, there's been a lot of people looking at it today. I, uh, I haven't quite made up my mind whether I wanted to rent it or not, but, uh... What did you say your name was? Daly. Jerry Daly. Well, bless you, darling. You must be tired out. Come along. Come with me now and rest. Hey, what about my birthday? Well, what about it? Your mother and I worked for hours trying to fix up a surprise for you, and what happened? You traipse in with some stranger. Well, what's wrong with that? She, she has to have a place to stay, and, well, Mom needs the money, and, well, anyhow, it was your dad's idea in the first place. Hello, Doc. Well, hello. We was waiting for you, kid. Waiting for me? Yeah. Well, there must be some mistake. Oh, oh I get it. A couple of reporters, huh? Well, I'm sorry, boys. I haven't got time to talk to you now. I've got to get back to the store. Excuse me. Just a minute. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't know us, son, but we're pals of Smiling Bill Martin. Yeah. And Bill being kind of busy, he asked us to sort of keep an eye on you and your boyfriend. You know, uh, sort of keep you out of trouble until both of your memories came back. Go ahead. Run along. But we won't be far away. Uh, sure. Sure, uh... Thanks, fellas. Sure, we laugh too. Martin's got his own fish to fry. Dave Logan and Slat Sackert, his two boys, are hanging around town, but Bill slipped away someplace. And you know Bill, when he goes off alone, something pops. Right, I'll stick to Slats and Dave till Bill shows up. How about anything else, fellas? Uh, so. Right. Say, look, fellas, we gotta find Smiling Bill. I just listened to a fine bawling out over the phone for letting him get out of sight. So did I. Let's split the town up. Joe, you take the hotel lobby. Frank, you hide in the hallway, and Sam, you go to the sheriff's office. I'll check with the auto camp. He may be registered at that hotel as a blind. Okay? Right. Okay. Hey, let's go. Let's go. hey, you guys, what about the door, you Put it on the tap. All right. Hey, Mr. Frank. Yeah? Everybody's talking about sticking to someone, and we is the ones that's being stuck. Look, stop worrying, will you? I'll think of something. I hope so, because them two friends of Mr. Martin is two tough-looking customers. And I just thought... Yeah? We better think up something before that Mr. Martin... Uh, before... Cut it out. Uh, 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 What's the uh, matter with you? Uh, I'll have a soda, Doc. Oh, sure, Mr. Martin. Uh, anything else you want, Mr. Martin? All right, kids, start talking. But, Mr. Martin, we... to be crowded out of the headlines, it seems. Smiling Bill Martin was shot to death there this afternoon under almost identical circumstances as his partner, Hype Innes, a few days ago. The authorities have decided that the killing of Smiling Bill Martin, following so closely on the heels of the Hype Innes murder, points definitely to the gangland vendetta. Meanwhile, Midvale, the scene of the crimes, goes merrily on its way. On, right in your will? How much is half of 300 grand? 150. Why? 150. The guy could have himself a time on that kind of dough. Too much shooting in Europe. But South America would be okay. 
Sure, why not? South America. We could get us one of them Spanish haciendas and have a time. Yeah, I always did want to learn the rumba. Hey, what's the matter with you? Are you crazy? Look, I ain't kidding. What's to keep us from splitting that 300 grand? Nothing but fine on it. I can build it. That's what makes it so sweet. With them out of the way, they're just those two screwball kids between us and the dope. Yeah. That's an idea. We better start putting on the pressure. Now you're talking. Suppose we take a little walk about the time the drugstore closes, eh? Uh, who you reckon shot both of them? I don't know. Some other gangsters, I guess. Do you think that Mr. Hype Man was trying to tell us who shot him so we could tell Mr. Martin so he could be careful? Yeah, probably. But he didn't tell us, so what can we do about it? So what is this uh, topsy business about Mr. Martin? Oh, well, uh, that's a duty the coroner has. You know, he finds out how the guy was killed, the cause of his death. Well, everybody knows he was shot. Yeah, sure, but, but how and where? In this case, the bullet ranged downward. Well, then he's back and come out his heart. Oh, through here, huh? No, no, your heart's not on the left side. What are you telling me? I'm all mixed up. I feel it here. Well, sure you feel it. That heart points slightly toward the left. But it's really located right here in the thoracic cavity. Mm-hmm. You sure are speaking powerful. What is this thoracic cavity? Not boracic, thoracic. Thoracic. Boracic. <laughs> it's all the same to me. Well, look, I'll explain it to you. Hey, Jeff. Jeff, look here. Hey, Jeff, look. The thoracic cavity is formed by the ribs, attached to the front to the breastbone, and then the back to the spinal column. I see you. Wait a minute, where are you going? It won't hurt you, come here. Now, I don't mind helping you with your weight, but now, I didn't figure on no third party. Well, this is no third party, this is just an old collection of bones. Maybe, but when it's through walking and talking, I'm through with it. Oh, now, wait a minute, most of this is old friends of ours. Take that shin bone, for instance. That's from Mrs. Dwyer's cow, and the humerus... Of and Mr. nothing humerus about a skeleton. No, now, wait, look. The humerus is the bone in the upper arm. This is the radius and the ulna. Come here and look at it, it won't bite you. It's got teeth, ain't it? Well, sure it has. Look, how many times have I told you, if you and I are gonna work together, you have to develop a, well, a scientific casualness. You know, look, pain and death right in the face. Mm -mm. Look, he's afraid of you. He's afraid of me? Look what he's doing. Well, sure, you looked him right in the eye and his jaw popped open. Uh, Mr. Frankie, you be scientific and I'll just be scared. You'll get over that after a few more experiments. Hey, turn off the gas, will you, Jeff? You know, if this experiment's a success, you're gonna be as famous as Pastor's Mad Dog. Say, you sure you turn off that gas down the basement? Yes, sir. Come on, let's go home. morning, you better not eat any breakfast. Might make you sick. I'm already sick, and by tomorrow I'll... Now, look, don't you worry about a thing. Good night. Hello, Good night. boys. Mm -mm. We've been waiting for you. Thought you might like to take a walk. Uh, uh, no thanks, fellas. I, uh, I gotta get home. My mother's waiting for me. Uh, me too. Take it easy, Doc. Start walking to the hotel. You too, big boy. Room 204. Yes, sir. Frankie, you're going home? Uh, yeah, as soon as I make a delivery. Uh, Mr. Frankie, we better move on. Good night. Come on. Sit down, boys. Relax. Well, we haven't got much time. We... Uh, no, sir, we got to... Sit down. Now, we don't want no trouble with you guys. High Fitness gave you a message for Smiling Bill. But Bill got knocked off before he could do anything about it, right? Yeah, that's right, except... Now, look, Doc. We ain't got no time to waste. We play for keeps. What's the message? Well, Hype died before he could give me the message. That's your story, too? Uh, yes, sir, that's the truth. 
Okay, take your shoes off. Is we gonna sleep here tonight? Hey, wait a minute, what's the idea? We're gonna use a little persuasion. Well, why pick on him? Because we thought you might try to be a hero, and we don't want no trouble. Relax. Honest, Mr. Captain, we don't know nothing. We'll bring your memory back. Oh, Mr. Captain, don't make me pull my shoes off. My feet is awful sensitive. Then start remembering that message. I tell you, there was no message. Okay, Dave. Uh, talk to the men, Mr. Franklin. Hey, wait a minute, you... Who is it? Sure. Over now. One peep out of you guys and it's curtains. Oh, hello, Frankie. Oh, hello, Sheriff. How are you? Your mother's looking for you. You better run along home. Oh, sure. We were just leaving. We were just talking over old times, Sheriff. Yeah, I know. Now, listen, boys. I haven't got a thing on you. But I know who you are. And I just want to advise you to forget whatever's on your mind and go back where you came from. Okay? Oh, absolutely, Sheriff. Absolutely. Sure, sure. Okay. That's fine, boys. Then there won't be any trouble. Good night. I bet you never thought you'd see your son's face on the front page of a big New York newspaper. And what is there to be proud about that? Having your face next to two gangsters. But, Mom, that's publicity. And, well, that's what's making things go around. Well, that'll be a great help to me when I'm ready to give the world my experiments. Now, listen to me, son. You've got a job. And you're being paid to do it right. And not to be wasting your time with reporters and experiments and all that. I saw Doc Hunter last night, and I know by the way he spoke that he don't think you're tending to business the way you should. Oh, but I am, Mom. Washing bottles and dishes and mixing sodas, well, those things are all unimportant when, when you're on the verge of a big discovery. Well, maybe washing bottles and making syrup is all part of the plan. There's no shortcut to success, Frankie. It's all hard work. But, Mom, I do work hard, but when you have to wash bottles and mix syrup, like, well, those things aren't even important to you. Why, this discovery will mean a lot to the world. I know it will, dear, and I'm proud of you. But in the meantime, don't let us lose sight of the fact that the store and Dr. Hunter are making it all possible. Good morning. Oh, oh good, good morning. morning. Mm, that coffee smells good. You better close those windows before those reporters come rushing in. Do you like coffee? Well, I'm one of those people who is utterly no use until I've had two cups. Two cups? Well, that's for breakfast, and then at odd times during the day. You mean more? Do you realize that much coffee contains enough caffeine to give you, well, a terrific heart condition? Oh, don't mind him. Good coffee never hurts anyone. Well, and this is good. Now, you just help yourself. There's toast. I've got to run along to the market. And don't you be late for work. All right, Mom. Say, um, I was a little worried about you two boys with Dave and Slats last night. <laughs> you were a little worried. You should have seen us until the sheriff showed up. Say, that's right. We did see you last night. Well, sure, I get it now. You're the one that tipped off the sheriff. Oh, gee, Miss Daly, I don't know how to thank you. I... Never mind it, Frankie. Look, you and your mother have been swell to me, and I don't want to see anything happen to you. So why don't you trust me? Trust you? Well, what do you mean? Well, why don't you give me the message that Hype left and tell me what Smiling Bill said before he died? Well, I, I wish I could, but that's just it. There, there was no message. Well, if you don't feel like talking, all right, Frankie. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry you feel like that. I, I sort of figured you trusted me that... Oh, I gotta go. I'll be late for work. Slash Sackert said he was just passing through Midvale on his way back to New York. Yeah. Says he can't understand why anybody'd shoot Martin. No, they're not holding him. What's that? Repeat that again. Okay, I'll get right on it. Thanks, Doc. I reversed those charges. It's all right. Give me a couple of nickels for the marble game, Charlie. Uh, no catch him, sir. Go. Give me a couple of nickels, Doc. Right, wait a minute. All right, I give up. What do you have? Nothing. Oh. Hey, Doc, you got a good remedy for a cold? What, you got a cold? No, but in case I get one, I want a good remedy. <laughs> Frankie, you go back and clean up that prescription counter. Yes, sir. Uh, he wants a couple of nickels, and this man wants a cup of coffee. All right, I'll get it. Hey, Doc, how long have you been here? Oh, hello, Sheriff. I'm staying away from those reporters. Where can we talk? Well, we can get down to the basement. Fine. Say, this town ought to erect a monument to the unknown killer. He certainly balanced their budget for them. The vanilla kid? Oh, you mean young Dr. Kelly? 
Oh, I don't know, Bob. I'm about convinced his first story's on the level. What about Dave Nolan and Slats Eckert? Yeah? Well, they're not hanging around Midvale for their health. Keep close track of them and watch yourself. I'll try to run up tomorrow. Okay, check in with the sheriff. He'll know where to find me. All right. Why don't we cut out the clown, Frankie? Now, look, you're a nice kid, and I don't want to see you getting a jam. But I'm investigating a couple of murders, and you're obstructing justice. Me? Well, gosh, I don't know anything about it. Then what's all the shooting for? <laughs> I don't know. Now, wait a minute. Hypiness falls dead at your feet. Smiling Bill is shot right under your nose, and two of their mobs start working on you in the hotel room. Yeah, it's a good thing you showed up when you did. Well, I may not be on hand the next time. Your only protection is to open up. You've got the key to the whole case. The message Hype gave you will lead us to the killer. And it's a cinch whoever did the killing has got the money. Yeah, but, but that's just it, Sheriff. I never did get the message. Well, if you're telling the truth, you better hope this thing will be cleared up right away. As long as that mob think you know something, your life is going to be one continual kick in the teeth. Think it over, Frankie. Yeah, yeah, I will. Hi, Ruth. Where'd the gang go? Oh, they're hot on the trail of something else. But don't worry, all the hard work's over. Oh, now, look, don't you start picking on me. I'm having enough trouble. What's the big problem this time? Well, everybody, including the sheriff, thinks I know more than I do. Well, don't let that worry you. You and I know that that's impossible. I'm going home. Wait a minute, Ruth. What's the matter? Oh, nothing. Oh, I know. The other night about the birthday party. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I guess I was kind of... Well, you were kind of... Oh, well, look, forget it. I don't want you feeling that way. I mean, after all, you and I have been friends a long time, and, well, I'd like to feel that you are on my side. You know, kind of rooting for me. Well, I am on your side, Frankie, but it burns me up when you forget all about the ones that are really interested in you. Forget? Look, what do you think I want to do great things in medicine for? Just so Mom and, well, you too, so you'll both be proud of me. I'm sorry I was nasty. See, there's a swell show on at the Bijou tonight. Maybe we could catch the second show. Oh, well, gee, I'd like to, Ruth, but I just got to work on my experiment. Well, by all means, don't let me interfere with the work of a great scientist. I hope it blows up. Um, Well, where have you been? I've been dodging them two gentlemen. Is they been here? No. But you know, Jefferson, I've been thinking. Uh-oh. No, I mean about that message. You know, we're really in a spot. We're always in a spot. Yeah, we're gonna stay right there with this killer running around loose. Is we gonna leave town? No, of course not. We're gonna stay right here and catch the killer. Come on. Now, we know that Smiling Bill was killed by a bullet that came through that window. And Hype was shot just before he came in the store. Now, the coroner says that both bullets came from the same gun. And if I'm right, they were fired from the same spot. Now, look, get outside a minute. Now, hold it. This way a little bit. All right, now, come on in. Bang! That's it. Look, anybody coming into the store would be an easy target from that loft across the street there. Oh, Mr. Frankie. I got it. We're going to reconstruct the crime. Oh, Mr. Frankie, I'm going to be awful busy. Can't you do your reconstructing by yourself? Of course not. You've got to be the bait. Oh, you mean that I was hooked? Well, look, we've got to catch the killer. Oh, well, can't you use some other kind of bait? Well, look, what are you worrying about? I haven't let anything happen to you yet, have I? Yeah, but you're beyond that now. Now, listen, they'll be coming in here pretty soon, so be quiet and listen. When the store is full of people, I'll get a phone call from you. Where will I be phoning from? Well, I'll fake the phone call because you'll be hiding down in the basement. Not down there with him. With who? That thing behind that curtain. Oh, Jefferson, don't be silly. A skeleton can't hurt you. Yeah, but if he won't associate with me, he's got to put on some skin. I've seen. Now, come here. Quit interrupting now and listen closely. When the store is full of people, I'll pretend that you phoned to say that you know who the killer is and that you're going to the sheriff's office in about an hour with a proof. That'll give time for the news to spread around town and get to the killer. Then we can reconstruct the crime. I got to stay down in that basement all the time? No, 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 of course not. That's when you duck out the back door, go up the alley and buy the feed store and start for the sheriff's office. 
Now, if the plan works, just as you get in front of the drugstore, the killer will try to shoot you. What do you mean, try to shoot me? He ain't missed yet. Yeah, but look, I'll be up there to catch him. It's simple. Yeah, that's too simple. In fact, that's crazy. Now, look. Quick, here they come. Now, get down there and stay I'll come back for you. Be right with you, boys. Uh, when you come back, you better bring that smell and so. Hurry up. Now, go on. Get down. Go on down there. Hurry up. How come I come to this place? I've never heard of something before in my life. Now, if I go up them steps, I'll get shot. And if I stay down here, I'll be scared to death. Why do Mr. Frankie do them things to me? Come on, Slats, loosen up. Will you give us a lead? Did he? Nah, he just stalled. Said he and David stopped off on their way back to New York. Then I asked him if it was true the sheriff had told him to leave town. Dave piped up and said they'd been asked to stay and help. <laughs> <laughs> give me that. Come on. What's the idea? Uh, they're a rowdy lot. But good for business. Here you are, Mr. Haddon. Drink hearty. Had enough of this stuff to float a battleship. My stomach's just as bad as ever. Oh, you don't expect me to cure you right away and lose a good customer, do you? <laughs> you better fix me up another bottle. Uh, say, Doctor, I've run out of malt. Uh, would you take over for a minute? Yes, all right. Fine, thank you. A little water, please. Colonel Link. One, six, three, please. <laughs> there you are, Sam. There'll be no candid shots of me. Okay, okay. Hold it. I think that's my call. Hello. Let me speak to Mr. Frankie, please. What's that? Oh, oh, yeah, just a minute. Oh, Frankie. Yeah. It's for you. I think it's Jefferson. Thanks, Charlie. This isn't more of your shenanigans, is it, Frankie? Oh, no, Doc. I guess Jeff really stumbled on something this time. Oh, gee, I forgot that malt. Hey, Jeff. Everything's working swell. They all went over to the sheriff's office to wait for you. Oh, Mr. Frank, I done took all of this I can take. Is we got to go through with this? You ask a question like that when we practically solved a very important crime. Well, we'll be national heroes. Yeah, all most of them dead now. Now, look, stop worrying, will you? I'm going to take care of everything. I'm going over the loft and wait for the killer. There's no telling when he'll show up, and I want to be ready for him. I'll never be ready. Now, pay attention. We want to wait a while to be sure the news has gotten to him. And then you start walking. And remember, right by the drugstore. And I'll take care of the rest. You got it? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Frankie. But I got a collapsible feeling inside. Here, now, look. Keep your eye on this. And at two sharp, get going. 
Yes, sir. Good luck to you, Jeff. Thought he got it. you knowing who the killer is. Well, get back, Miss Ruth. Get back quick. Please, Miss Ruth. What's wrong with you? I'm uh, reconstructing. Reconstructing what? The last mile. You don't know what's going on. Are you all right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Ooh, something hit me on the head. Whew. Hey, hey, did you see him? Did he go by you? Did we see who? The killer, he was here. Who is he? I don't know, Sheriff, I, I didn't see him. What? Well, I, I heard a noise, so I ran and hid. He, he didn't come in that way. I, I think he came in from over here. I, I stayed there, and then he went toward the window. 
Well, he, he lifted his gun and he was going to kill Jeff, so I dove into a bunch of boxes to spoil his aim and... Oh, that's all I remember. Get a picture, Sam. We ought to wring your neck. Come on, boy, speak up. Who is he? Who's who? The killer. Weren't you on your way to the sheriff to tell who he is? I don't know nothing. And I wasn't on my way nowhere. All I know that I is the bait for the reconstruction. What are you talking about, bait, reconstruction? Oh, he don't know anything about it, Mr. Ames. It was my idea. See, I figured if the killer thought Jeff knew who he was, why, well, he'd try to kill Jeff before he could get to the sheriff's office. And, well, I, I was going to be here and capture him. And, well, it almost worked. It almost worked. You risked Jefferson's life. You let a killer escape. Whoever he was, he got away. Get through there. Come on, Sheriff. We're wasting time. Let's check up on Dave and Slat's whereabouts for the last hour. Right. But I want to see if Frankie's all right. No, I'll take you home. Uh, Mr. Frankie, is you sure that you was all right? Yeah, I'll be all right, Jeff. Help me up, will you? Uh, can we go now, Mr. Frankie? Ain't we through? Yeah, you said it. We're through, all right. I wonder. You know, Jeff, he was standing right here when he aimed that gun at you. I'd rather not hear no more about that, Mr. Franklin. Let's get out of here, please. What a break. If we could have only gotten a look at his face. Hey, Jeff. Jeff, look at this. See that button with a little piece of cloth? Look at it. It's hooked to that nail. Say, this might be a pretty important clue. Sure enough? Well, I don't know. It's probably been here a year. But I'm going to keep it anyhow, just as a little souvenir. To remind me to stick to my own career. Science. Uh, Mr. Frankie, why don't you show that to the sheriff? No, I'm through helping him. Did he appreciate our efforts? No. Anyhow, I haven't got time to be fooling around with murderers. We have to work for humanity. I ain't never worked for so many humans before in all my life. No, no, I mean science. You know, discovering new germs, microbes, and, well, inventing new serums. And, well, Jeff, do you realize that right there on that shelf alone, there's enough material for a hundred important experiments? You know, Dr. Hunter told you not to test none of them bottles. Oh, well, I... Be right back. Hello, Mr. Haddon. Where's Dr. Hunter? Well, uh, he went down to the barber shop. I can get him for you if you like. Never mind, I'm in a hurry. See if he left a bottle of my medicine for me. Yes, sir. Oh, you going away, Mr. Haddon? Yes, for a day or two. Huh? I'll get your medicine. No, he usually keeps it in the shelf. Right there in front of your nose. There. Uh, no, no, sir. That, that's Mr. Kennedy's medicine. Uh, I know where the prescription is, though. I can fix you some if you can wait a few minutes. All right, get a move on you. Yes, sir. Get the sheriff, quick. Uh-oh. This guy's the killer. Now, go on. Hurry up. I'll make some for you to drink now, Mr. Hedden. Uh, how big a bottle do you want to take with you? Any size, but hurry. Yes, sir. Say, say, this tastes funny. What'd you put in it? Uh, nothing, nothing at all. It's the same thing the doctor gives you. Why? Why, you've you given me... Frankie, 
What's happened? Oh, nothing. I, I just gave him some medicine with some stuff in it to knock him out. Are you crazy? Frankie, you've killed him. But, but I had to stop him. He was making a getaway. He's the killer. You're mad. What did you give him? Oh, I don't know. Some of that pain stuff. I can't pronounce it. Get his head up and open his collar. I'll get an antidote. You and Frankie have been stirring up another mess. I'm going to start a killing on my own. Who's had him? The big shot? Just the banker, that's all. Will he be all right, Dad? I think so. How dared you do such a thing? You might have killed him. If I ever catch you so much but as... Doctor, a... please, won't you listen to me? No! What's going on here? Get a picture, Joe. Keep back. Give us a chance to find out what this is all about. Well, Frankie drugged his medicine. I've got him coming around all right, but what am I going to say to him? Won't somebody please listen to me? Look at this button and piece of cloth that matches his sleeve. I found it up there in the loft. The kid seems to have something, Sheriff. You say his name is Haddon? Yeah, that's right. How long has he been in Midvale? Well, he bought the bank about two months ago, didn't he, Doc? Just about. Doesn't that face look familiar to you? Harry Fitzpatrick, the Brooklyn bank holder. Of course. Harry Fitzpatrick, wow! Hype Innocent, smiling Bill Martin's partner, gangway. The mustache and the cheaters had me fooled for a minute. Say, wasn't he supposed to have left the country? Yeah. And wait till the chief hears he's been running a bank within 50 miles of headquarters. Holy mackerel, what a story. Let's be at him. Hello, Harry. How's the banking business? Yeah, Harry Fitzpatrick, purple gang leader and bank robber, discovered running bank in Midvale. Is that something? <laughs> I'll be seeing you soon. Goodbye. Special Investigator Ames recognized leading banker as missing gangster wanted in a Brooklyn bank holdup. Sure he did. Who else? Okay, Merton. So Hype and Smiling Bill dropped in for a showdown and you had to rub them out. So you know all the answers, don't you? Mm-hmm. And I imagine I'll find a nice haul of hot money and bonds in your little bank. Hey, Mr. Ames, maybe it's in the grip he was making a getaway, you know. You're all right, Frankie. You've done a swell job. All right, Harry, let's go. What a break! Give me a telephone! What a headline! Give me a phone, is there? Hey, Jeff, listen to this. If Frankie Kelly's dreams come true, the world will have a new Louis Pasteur. <laughs> well, who can tell? A lot of great men came from a small town. Well, wait a minute. Do that say all that in there about you? Yeah, right here. You know, Jeff, if that new experiment of ours is successful, why, well, we're gonna make history. Uh-oh. Here we go again. Hey, Jefferson, come back here. Hey, Jefferson! <laughs> <laughs> 